Hey, it's Tom Wilmot, Forex Fortune Hunting. Only today, by popular demand, we're going to do some Fidelity Fortune Hunting with Active Trader Pro. We've had a few questions come in about time frames. It's a little tricky to change them. So let's do some background research on that. A quick review is in order. Hold on to your hat. We'll get started right after this. Okay, Fidelity friends, let's take a look at how we would do some fortune hunting in terms of time frames on Active Trader Pro. This particular chart is a chart of uh, CMG, which is Chipotle Mexican Grill. And just as a quick review, you know you can go up here into the into the symbols list and you can add your favorite symbols simply by clicking in the box and adding them. I've got Piton down here. I've got the VIX and gold and so forth, all sorts of things that you can check out. And we will later. However, whatever is on the screen right now in terms of the number of price bars or candlesticks, the time frame, the history, all of that will be the same no matter which of this, those singles, uh, symbols you click. Now the way we adjust that, notice now we have a 15 minute chart on the wall. I hope that's uh, clear to everybody on our YouTube video. If we were to go here, you can see we have a menu of preset options from Fidelity, but you won't, don't need to be limited to that. You can go, as one of our uh, members asked, and create a 240 minute chart and that basically is four hours. Now in overnight trading and things like uh, futures, uh, also in terms of the Forex, a four hour chart may be very appropriate because we have a 24 hour cycle. I would recommend, even though you can use 240 minutes uh, on a particular uh, chart, and I'll show you how, simply click apply and you'll review what happens here and you'll see Chipotle change to a four hour chart. Notice because it's 240 minutes versus 15, the price bars get, the uh, candlesticks get pretty big and ugly. The way to change that and show more data on the screen is once again in this area here, which you get to, if it isn't visible, you simply click here. There's your uh, time frame all the way back to 220. Notice that, uh, 2020, sorry. Notice that we have a data set that goes back slightly into 2019 once we get to 240 minutes. If you got to three minutes or two minutes or six minutes, probably the data set wouldn't go back even to January, although it depends upon the stock and the popularity of it, what Fidelity would choose to put into its data set database. And we have made big strides with data over the years. 4X is the same. The, the, the histories are much better than they used to be. Uh, also, uh, that's true in terms of uh, if you were to do something like at ES, which would be the E-mini futures, uh, and it's a continuous contract there rather than a specific one, you could get a history way back in time now. But still in all, because you need a high, low, open and close for each of these candles, the shorter the time frame, the more data you need to store to go back historically. So as a result, there are limits to that even today. Now, for example, here, if we take this particular thing and get our double-edged arrow on it, we can move this back in time, get rid of this, Let's see if we can go back further, and you can see we can make our candle smaller the more data we d decide to display. You can also go here to a 5-day, a 10-day, year-to-date, whatever you choose, and you can play around with it in any dimension that you wish to do so. Now, let's just uh, take a quick peek here at the calculator. Let me bring it over for you, see if I can find it, actually. Bring it over from my other, I've got a click on it, sorry. There it is. Uh, we want to take a look now because I would recommend, although four hours is a pretty interesting time frame to use for Forex and for futures because of the 24-hour time frame you're using. They trade, you know, around the world 24 hours a day. The stock market is really quite different from that, obviously, because it's from 9.30 to 4 in the afternoon. Even though there's pre-market and after-market uh, activity, especially during earnings, 
the situation is that the bulk of your data is going to be able to be displayed between 9.30 and 4. So that's six and a half hours, for those of you who want to calculate it. And six and a half hours, uh, uh, in terms of minutes, is 390 minutes. That's six times 60 plus 30 more. So if we were to put 390 in here, what I would recommend if you want to get two candlesticks a day is that you should, in fact, put in 195 down here, perhaps, instead of 240, 195. And mostly, this isn't to say you have to, but now what you have are two candlesticks for each uh, day's activity on the chart. And it's just a little easier for my brain to get a handle on that than it would be for 240, for example. While 240 works great for uh, the pound versus the yen, uh, I'm not sure it's as helpful in terms of these securities. So also I would recommend if we were to pull back our, uh, if we were to pull back our thing here, let's say 390, let's say we wanted to get a slightly, uh, a, a slightly different kind of view of things. And we'll go here and we'll say divide it by five. I happen to know that turns out to be a 78 minute chart. Uh, if you do four, it's some odd number, fractional, and that's not as helpful. So let's take a look at 78 minute if you want a finer view of things. And basically what we'll do is type in 78 and then we'll hit apply. And now what we have are four price bars for each one of the daily trading sessions. Now keep your eye here in this area. This is the area where you're going to see the high, low, open, and close for the date and the time period for the chart. Now, once again, we had 78 minutes up on the wall now. You can probably imagine that this is, uh, this is the area here where we opened, uh, we closed below the line here. I'm going to open this up some more so you can see. I'm sorry about that. I don't mean to be difficult. Here was a closing value for the 78-minute uh, chart on 4 o'clock. It fell down. It opened quite a bit lower down in this area, as you can see your candlestick. If you don't prefer uh, price bars, let's do some more work on it. There's your candlestick. We opened down here. We immediately came up. We pulled back a little bit in, you know, just before lunch, and then we had a move higher. Now, at this particular area, also is where your 12... 16, 20, and 24 EMA roll uh, bands began to roll over and head into the uptrend. And so for CMG, if you're day trading and your account's worth more than $25,000 uh, 25, and you're not going to get dinged for day trading rule violations, then you're in a situation where this kind of a chart makes a lot of sense either for options or for straight trading. So in any event, I would recommend 78 and uh, 195, if you want to get a, a tighter view of things, you can go down further than that if you'd like. And for sure, uh, three minutes or five minutes is fine as well. It, I would think that it's a little easier to divvy it up by something that divides into 390. Okay, let's take a pause and we'll get back with the next idea. Okay, now we're going to take a look at what we would like to do once we get this ready to go because we'd like to be able to change this every once in a while and so what we'd like to do now is to come up into this area and not setting so much that's candlesticks versus price bars and so on and so forth here are your choices there all of these issues show tabs and everything else everything you want in in a chart uh, whether your grid lines uh, have opacity or not let me pull this up and show you what that means. So you can get some grid lines on this chart. You can see it in the background. Uh, you can also uh, give the watermark, and that's the stock symbol in the middle of the chart that we can't see because it's behind this black box, okay? We don't want this one unless you want to fuss with that. What I'd like to do here is to go to the little diskette, and now you can see I have put together some standard kinds of EMAs uh, and chart, charts, you can add indicators, you can have your preferences here. Now we've taken off the, uh, the uh, RSI at this point in time. So let's go back and see if we can restore this one here and uh, find out. And sure enough, now we can see that our 
uh, our uh, 195 minute chart, which I have stored as a standard version, and our RSI come up automatically at this level, then it's just a matter of moving like this to show a little bit more uh, uh, of the uh, data history on one screen and we're good to go. Now, if we come back and we get rid of this, okay, we delete the RSI, and if we were to come back here and go again to a 78-minute chart and we applied that, <clears throat> let's see what happens here while you, you come through. I want to apply a 78-minute chart. Come on, baby. Well, I guess we have to re-plug this in here. 78. Now it's going to change. There's our, there's our current version. Now if we come up to this, we can save a chart. And we want to give, we want to either go back and adjust one of the other ones that we've got, okay? Or we can come in here and we can do 78 minute multiple moving averages, say, okay? And we save that. Now what we have up here in our settings, if we'd like to come to this as opposed to our 195, that's, that's great. It's very easy to switch between the two of them. Here's our old Super Gimma, for those of you who remember that one as well. Let's see what we've got. We want to go to this one and see if we can click it. And we click it a couple times and up it comes. And there's our Super Gimma with the additional uh, moving averages down here, probably a 47 or a 50 and a 38 and so forth. Uh, we can uh, go to Nada, which is nothing but candlesticks and so forth. Or now we could come back to our... Uh, let's see, which one did we have before? The basic EMA, I think, was the 195-minute chart. And sure enough, that was the 195-minute chart with the RSI. And we can see now also we could cycle through and go to the 78-minute chart. Now, these are a little fussy, but you can master this if you try hard. You can re-watch the video to see about my clicks uh, if you'd like to. But those are some of the basics with time frames. Uh, we, remember, we talked about moving our margins here. Uh, here we click on the double arrow to be able to move the margin left or right. We have an up, upside up here just below our indicators. We have a downside down here below, uh, below this area. And we can pull up into the chart and so forth. We click to get this on or off. And obviously, we're able to change our indicators simply by modifying or deleting or adding new ones up in this area here. I hope all of this is helpful to your deliberations, guys. Uh, once again, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the chat box below. Don't forget to visit our website, fxfortunehunter.com. If you're interested in the Forex and MetaTrader, there's lots of good stuff there. And also in our video feed at uh, this particular channel, uh, Vineyard FX. So we'd love to invite you over to Forex. It's lots of fun. You can use some of those additional indicators to add to your uh, supply over here for the uh, uh, for the options uh, and equity uh, IRA kinds of accounts. So don't be a stranger. Keep us posted. Subscribe to our channel if this is helpful to you and give us a like. Don't be stingy. Check out our books, Forex Power Surge and the Zlander Flytrap Trading Strategy over on Amazon Kindle. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.